We had some like gnarly freezing rain last night. Everything's shiny and like super slippery. Even driving out here, it was just ridiculous. But everything in the building is dry. And we're gonna do hopefully the all the radiant tubes today. And then we can pour the concrete. So something I learned about uh, the PEX tubing that I had to use here is that it's actually a special kind. It's uh, something about it doesn't let air transfer through it or something. Uh, I can't remember exactly, but anyways, it's a special tube for uh, radiant systems inside concrete. The wire mesh that I got there made this way easier than uh, than if I would have had it done with a rebar because I had a nice six inch grid the entire way. Zip tying everything in place was pretty easy. So you'll see every once in a while, I pull a tape measure out and I measure the distance. All I did is I used a calculator on the internet to figure out roughly how much tubing I would need. And I decided to use a reversing spiral along with multiple loops. So I just took how much I needed uh, as per the calculator, divided that into I think I did five loops and then I would just measure half the distance of one of the loops and then I would turn around there and work my way back and it's not exactly perfect but it's pretty close. lived in a house with uh, radiant heat but I've done a lot of research on it and I've heard good things about it I'm actually really excited for the uh, the uh, the type of heat that you get out of it and the idea with radiant that you would heat from the floor upward so that from the ground to about six feet is warm instead of the typical forced air where you're heating the air which goes up and then it fills up until you feel the heat from the top down. Yeah, if I recall correctly, it was 500 feet of tubing that I had to put into the slab there.
Okay, a little update here. It's just before uh, I'm gonna be getting concrete poured. So I don't know what happened with that last clip there, but uh, the footage got corrupted and that's all we got. But uh, you can see there that I had all the tubes in there all nicely done up. And then here I needed to put some tarps on either end because the weather was unpredictable and I didn't really want the inside to fill up with snow or rain or whatever. And I was supposed to have the concrete poured the following week here. So I just used some of the old uh, 2x10s that I had used for my uh, foundation forms. Screwed them up there to give a little bit of backing for the tarp there so it wouldn't blow away. I just ran some leg bolts through the uh, bolt holes on the edge of the building there. You're actually supposed to install a little L-shaped uh, flashing on there, which I put on after I had built the end walls. But for now, I just left them off so that uh, I could build the end walls eventually here. were freezing up overnight so the nice thing about having the tarps there too is I could run a propane heater if I really needed to to add a little bit of extra heat to help the concrete to cure. 